What's up guys, Garrett here to talk to you about my personal favorite optic to use for Airsoft, the Trigicon ACOG. Now this is a replica one sitting on my PTS Masada, which has the Beta Project gas conversion kit in it, that Flash Hider likes the ring. And I'm here to tell you a little bit of history about it and why I think it should be an optic in almost everyone's collection, at least on one of their rifles. First, a brief history about the ACOG. Trigicon was originally formed in 1981 under some other type of name. I can't exactly remember it off the top of my head, but formally known as Trigicon in 1985. In 1987, the ACOG was developed as a low power optic for law enforcement, military, and civilian shooters. Now, the reason it's considered a low power optic is most versions of the ACOG at least as far as airsoft and military and law enforcement are concerned, are a four power, 32 millimeter objective lens diameter. So this lens up here is 32 millimeters in diameter. Now four power is a good bridge between sort of your red dots, which have no magnification whatsoever, and a scope, which can have, uh, anywhere between 9, 16, 24, crazy amounts of power. This is designed to be fixed power, so you're not gonna be able to adjust it to change the magnification at all, which is one of the reasons why it has this nice small profile to it. Now, personally, this is one of my favorite optics to use. As you can see, I have it on my PTS Masada here, but I also have one on my Scar L dubbed the FN Hammer. You can see it got the bipod. I wrote an article about this earlier. You can check that out on our WordPress if you're interested to learn more about my FN Hammer project. But I have an ACOG on each one of these for sort of different reasons. Different but the same, so to speak. So with the Trigicon ACOG being a three and a half to four power optic. There are different variations of it, of course. Some of them, the lowest is, which is what, uh, the lowest power is three and a half power, the maximum being six power. They are, they were picked up by the military relatively quickly, and we still see them today. As far as a lightweight optic, it's sort of on par with the early red dots, as far as uh, size and weight especially the size, because you can see how small this thing is compared to, this is an Aimpoint Comp M4 replica. You can see that they're about the same size. I don't have weight off the top of my head, but it's about the same, really, even, even with the small Dr. Optic, which I'll get to that in a moment. But I personally like using magnification in Airsoft. And the reason behind that is a lot of times when people are behind cover, they might be sticking out maybe an elbow, their shoulder, their helmet, their head could be peeking out. You know, it's really quite interesting to see people only stick out very small pieces of themselves in order to shoot you around a corner. So I like having a magnified optic because it allows that image to be a lot closer to me and I can put a, a crosshair or in some cases with some of the airsoft models and of course the real one, a red dot sort of reticle on that and have a slightly better chance of hitting them because I can see it more clearly. The object is much larger, so I have a little bit more finite aiming element that I can use. I'm gonna go back to the Masada because it's a lot lighter gun compared to that FN Hammer. So having, like I said, having the four power I think is advantageous to me. Able, able to see things just a little bit closer allows you to get a slightly more precise shot. Now, this is not a sniper scope. It's nothing like this, where you're gonna be able to zoom in really, really close, get a super fine sight picture, and then pull the trigger to get a really good shot. This is intended for sort of the close enough type mentality, similar to how uh, red dots are used, except with a red dot, since you have no magnification, whatever you're seeing is what you're getting. But with an ACOG, you have a little bit of magnification that you can have, 
to make that slightly more precise shot. Not to say that you can't hit precisely with this, but the limited amount of magnification changes sort of your roll a little bit. Now for maybe a lightweight DMR or even just a general purpose infantry or rifleman type roll, I think the ACOG's great for something like that. And that's why I have two of them. For me, I like having the ACOG on this PTS Masada because I can change the barrels out. In this particular configuration that I have right here, this is a 14 and a half inch barrel with a carbine length handguard. Now, if you decide to go shorter with the 11 and a half inch barrel, the ACOG, eh, you, you can be kind of hit or miss. As far as Airsoft is concerned, almost every gun's gonna perform about the same. So it's really up to personal preference as to what you like and what you can tune your gun to. But with a longer barrel, I like to have a little bit more range to be able to see and hit targets a little bit further out, or at least see where my BBs are going to hit. Like I said, this being a Masada or ACR, I can swap the barrels out. So right now I got the 14 and a half inch carbine length, but I also have this much longer 18 inch barrel set with longer handguard that I can use in a designated marksman role. And for me, rather than playing musical optics and having to change different optics to suit uh, to suit the situation that I'm trying to account for, I have one optic that I can leave on the gun, maybe make some minor tweaks when I change the barrel out in order to get it zeroed in just fine. The next thing that I want to talk about is the fact that I have this little RMR on top. Now granted, a scope is not going to be good in CQB. It takes a lot long, it takes a little bit longer to acquire your sight picture and in CQB where you need fast speed, a red dot is definitely gonna beat out a magnified scope. So that's one of the reasons why I like having these little micro red dots on top of here. You can see it's just, this, is, this one is based on the doctor optic, sort of the originator of the micro red dot, or at least this style of micro red dot type idea. But now Trojicana issues it with the RMR, the ruggedized, mini, or the rugged miniaturized red dot or rugged miniaturized reflex. I can't remember which one it is. So, for the close shots, having this little red dot on top is nice because the only thing that I have to do is shift my head upwards. Now, some people don't necessarily like that because you have to shift your cheek off the stock to be able to get that. I personally don't find it as big of a problem. And especially with the Masada, I can lift the cheek piece up a little, a quarter of an inch, you know, it doesn't, it helps, but it's not a ton, but it's definitely an option. Again, this is for sort of that quick engagement, all of a sudden you're surprised, you bring the gun up, find the dot real quick, and then you're able to shoot just okay. Another reason I like the ACOG over a scope, for instance, is the size. Like I was showing you earlier, this is an Aimpoint Comp M4, over top this ACOG, they're about the same size and form factor. This is a one and a half to four power scope. You can see it's much larger, takes up much more real estate. And while I can dial it in with these turrets that are easy to use with my hands, this is very heavy. This is probably twice the weight of this ACOG here. The ACOG is designed for co-mingling. And what that means is that you shoot both eyes open, like you do with a red dot, but you're not really looking through the magnified ACOG. You're simply looking through it to get that red center of the reticle. Your other eye is open, so that way you can see the surrounding area in your general vision, your 1X type vision, so to speak. By having both those open, the theory being that you translate the red reticle over into the unmagnified or the 1X vision that you have, it basically functions as a red dot. Obviously it's not as clear as a red dot because you still have the magnified picture in your right eye or left if you're a lefty, in your dominant eye, but it helps a little bit. It's just, it's an idea. It's a different way of shooting. So what are some problems with the ACOG? Well, one of the biggest complaints that people have is the eye relief and that's the distance from the lens to your eye. Now on the ACOGs, it's very, very short. It's probably about an inch, maybe two. 
So that's clear to me right now. I have about an inch between even the lens of my glasses to the this IP this eye cup right here. So it's not a lot. And because of the way the housing is built, it kind of and how close it is to your face, it obstructs the vision outside of the optic as well. Sort of like that black or pseudo blackness that you get around a scope, you're getting super close to this optic in order to be able to see it clearly, and that takes away your peripheral field of view. You don't necessarily have that problem with a red dot because you can mount the red dot further forward to allow your peripheral vision to pick up movement and things like that. You don't have that with an ACOG. You're sitting super close to be able to see correctly through it. One way Trigicon has helped to alleviate this is you can see this sort of cantilever design. The actual optic, if I take this kill flash off, you can see it ends right there. There's about three quarters of an inch to an inch before the end of the base attaches to the rail. The rest of it overhangs here. And that allows you to do what I have right here. I can put a folded backup iron sight underneath it. Now, at the same time, a standard deployable one like this Magpul Embus is not going to be able to flip up in case the optic gets damaged or things like that. You have to physically remove this in order to use your backup iron sights. It's not necessarily a big deal unless you need precious seconds, but there are 45, nowadays, there are 45 degree sights that you can either cant off to the side or you can even 45 degree offset a red dot if you need a quick, accurate, close range shot or if your primary ACOG optic fails for whatever reason. I've even seen iron sights that fit in this sort of profile. You press the button to deploy it, it folds out at the 45 degree and then flips up so that way you can actually see through it. That's one option to run. Another option, like I said, is to have this red dot on top. And I've addressed those types of currents before. You're getting a chin weld, not necessarily a cheek weld, so it's not exactly 100% stable. But for a quick close range shot, I think it, it does me just fine, and I think it can help you guys out as well. Compared to a scope like this, you don't get the adjustable magnification. This particular one is a one and a half to four power. So I can dial this back to one and a half power if I need a close range, slightly magnified shot, or I can dial it up to four power if I need that slightly more precise shot. But like I said, this is much larger compared to the ACOG. And the ACOG doesn't have this big knob, it doesn't have this knob to be able to adjust the magnification at all. It's fixed. But if you think about it, look at this, the Spectre DR, or the Elcan, something that's almost as heavy as this, but has a much larger profile, but also has the adjustable magnification. I don't have a Spectre DR type optic with me, but I know for a fact that they have a side lever almost in the same position as this QD lever here that allows you to switch between one times magnification to four times magnification. So if you need a close-up shot, you leave it at 1x and you can take those quick close-up shots. You need to make that slightly more precise shot, flip it to 4x, and now your crosshairs are zoomed in significantly more to be able to take that shot. The other reason I have two ACOGs and not just one I have one on a rifle and one on this IAR. This is my hammer build, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, hammer stands for Heat Adaptive Modular Rifle. It was FN's IAR M27 entryant uh, for the auto Infantry Automatic Rifleman program that the United States Marine Corps was doing. I decided to make a replica with a correct 18-inch barrel, a PEC-2, VFG, and an ACOG. The Marine Corps issues the six power ACOG for their machine gunners, and I believe the US Army issues it as well. The reason for that is a machine gunner, or an automatic rifleman in this case, is going to be set up in a prepared position in order to put down accurate suppressing fire. The nice thing about having a little bit of magnification in a relatively small package is it's light, easy to handle, and gives you that slightly more precise shot, like I was mentioning earlier. They also mount 
a doctor optic or micro red dot RMR type setup on top for those click, quick close range 50 meter shots. I've duplicated that same setup, although I do have a half inch riser in order to uh, get the scope up so I can see over this pec box here. But, like I said earlier, it's got iron sight underneath it and the space underneath the optic allows that to happen. Now, there are other different types of ACOG replicas out there. These two particular versions that I have right here, I don't exactly know the make of them. I believe they're GNP, but they are three and a half to four power magnification, but they do not have lighter reticles. This fiber here that would normally power the reticle, if it was a real one, doesn't do anything. There are models out there that have a working fiber and they come in red and green variants. There are also ACOG looking replicas that are just simply red dots. And they ha instead of having the little RMR on top, they have a pair of iron sights just sitting on top as well. For just in case the battery fails, you can still have a close range shot or have some type of iron sight system on here. These particular ones also have offset iron sights. You can see there's a front sight right here. There is a rear sight right here. Although the sight radius only being about five to six inches isn't really gonna be super accurate, especially with how thick this blade sight is on the front, but it's better than nothing. What I recommend folks do when they get or are thinking about getting a, an ACOG replica or even one in real life is to get a kill flash. Now, a kill flash is sort of this honeycomb looking thing on the front of this optic here. And I have that on there for two reasons. One, as you can kind of see with this red dot, it has a reflective lens on the front here. That's a coating to allow you to see correctly and helps prevent glare from coming back into the optic into your face. By having that reflective coating on there, Depending on what angle you're pointing the rifle at, you could be reflecting sunlight and potentially give away your position. Now, airsoft being close range as it is, you might already be seeing the person before you see the reflection. But the nice thing too about the kill flash is uh, it doesn't obstruct your view through the optic at all, but it also helps protect against BB impacts. This honeycomb, you can kind of see it on this one, has taken a few hits already. <laughs> so this is sort of an additional help to be able to protect your optic. Now, for real life, obviously a 5.56, 7.62, whatever caliber bullet, is just gonna go right through this thing if it gets a good hit on your glass. But for airsoft, when we're dealing with BBs that travel 400 feet a second, this is perfectly suited for that. I generally don't like having the little plastic shield on the front. I don't know, it's just not my cup of tea. So having the kill flash gives me the appearance, the still milsim e appearance that I like to have, but it also protects the optic. I also have one on this red dot, and you can see that's taken quite a few hits as well. So, wrap this up go quick through pros and cons of why I like the ACOG. It's a relatively lightweight, about the same weight as a red dot. It gives me slightly more magnification for a slightly better precision shot. Not a perfectly precision shot like a sniper rifle or a super magnified scope would be, excuse me, would be able to grant me, but it allows me to see targets a little bit closer to put a slightly better shot placement onto them. The cons? Short eye relief and having this dual optic set up isn't necessarily for most people, but I personally look past that into seeing a very solid optic option that I think people can use for airsoft and real steel. Now, I unfortunately don't have a real ACOG, but it is my goals to try and pick one up. Even after all these years, you know, like I said earlier, the ACOG's been around since 1987. It's a really long time and we're still using them today really shows a testament to the design and practicality of one of these type of optics. Well, all that being said and done, I'm Garrett from Gun Gamers. I'll see you out next time.